a very warm welcome and thanks for clicking on to the winter 2023 thoughts update number two yes we are creeping through the month of october and approaching winter 2023-24 i hope you're doing very well today it is a blustery day and it is getting colder as we move into the weekend just approaching as arctic air the first taste of arctic air comes down Thanks to high pressure to the west and low pressure to the east. And we will see wintry showers associated with that as well. Is it anything unusual? Is it a big deal? No, it isn't. Probably a bigger deal thanks to the fact that it has been so mild in recent times. So anyway, let's get to the update number two of the winter ideas. This is not a forecast. It is simply building the picture with regards to the overall situation that, that I'm looking at with regards to the upcoming season. There is a lot of things going on at the moment here, folks. Certainly one aspect is the current global state, the ocean and land, as well as the atmosphere. The temperature anomaly is pretty much off the scale. Some will argue that point. Uh, I get that. But, um, you know, based on all the situation that i've looked at so far um in our lifetime this is um pretty much the warmest we've seen so far so i'm going to kind of just read through this piece that i've now got published i will leave a link in the description below for you to be able to look at this yourself and look at the charts because it's kind of hard to see the charts on this video i, I get that i appreciate that so i want you to have a look at this um you know at your leisure but this is basically a you know a step forward from the the update of of one. Of course, we are seeing the advance of the El Nino. The Indian Ocean Dipole has strengthened as well, and you know there is a lot of competing factors to consider. Not one certain driver can you can lean on too much. You have to throw all the factors into the equation here. And to try and determine what's going on here. So I'll read through this. I hope it's as clear for you to understand as possible. But this is what I've written here. The planet is without doubt a warmer place now than a decade ago. And currently in a steep warming trend unlike anything seen in the modern era. For the last time the earth dipped below average. You have to go all the, back, all the way back to 2014. At the end of a series of cooler years following the 2008 solar minimum and ahead of a rise to a new warm benchmark in 2016. So, of course, we've seen the cold period um, generally kind of between 2008-2013. Then we, of course, were approaching a new solar minimum maximum and indeed we had the onset of uh, a new super El Nino, the first time since 97-98. Uh, we've seen a super El Nino, of course, 2015, 2016. And we've seen a jack up in the global temperature in response to that super El Nino and possibly other factors um, to, to take in, into consideration as well. Uh, incidentally, the water temperatures are warmer than they the were even back at this period of time. And the planet, as a result, is warmer as well. So... Um, you know, courtesy of the most recent Super El Nino and surpassing the spike in the wake of the super previous Super El Nino of 1997. It's safe to say that we're now surpassing 2016 with a new 2023 benchmark in terms of temperature. Ocean and atmosphere is very warm, record warm, and you can blame anything. CO2, underwater volcanoes, the Hunga Tonga volcanic eruption, etc., etc. You can... Uh, let me know in the comment section below what you think is the reason for this strong warming taking place here. I know it's a, a controversial um, subject. I know that. And I do try my very, very best. I'll give you my opinion, but I'll also try and show you the big picture instead of having a bias towards one particular agenda. All the warming uh, we, may, we may have now, I know there is always another side to this. And it's not quite as clear cut as what many would have you think. Been here before, long before we were here. 
Absolutely. So there is my opinion with regards to the overall warming situation at the moment. What impact could a warm ocean and atmosphere have on the 2023-24 winter? I believe it's possible that because of the warmer world, some of the tra tra traditional drivers, stroke teleconnections that we discussed below, may not deliver quite as clear of a signal as they once did. So the overall warmer planet makes it probably a little bit harder to then kind of pinpoint certain drivers and certain um, aspects that we would typically look at. Of course, uh, warm pools versus cold pools in the sea surface temperature profile, maybe not quite as clear cut as the ones were due to the net warming of the oceans. But this is the current global sea surface temperature profile around the planet as of the 10th of October. You can see here the clear positive Indian Ocean dipole signal. Very cool waters in the west shores of Sumatra here. Very warm waters over the western Indian Ocean. There's the El Nino, of course, the, the classic signature here. We've got a cool PDO, so we've got slight cooling over the North Pacific, but we are noticing a shrinkage of that cold water over the North Pacific. That is a slight concern for a winter weather lover, by the way. We've still got that negative PDO signal, the Pacific Decadal Oscillation, cold waters extending across the southern flank of uh, Hawaii. Very warm North Atlantic. We have got a little bit of cooling taking place over the central North Atlantic. Is there a hint of some sort of tripole? Good question. Only time will tell, of course. And, of course, we have to look at the... Um, the we we'll continue with the trend for warmest Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation on record while we still see with the cold or negative PDO likely hangover of the La Nina, of course. Past summer pattern, lots of blocking. While one of Europe and Northern Hemisphere's warmest summers and years on record in 2023 and eighth warmest for the UK, it's worth noting that there has been considerable blocking within the high latitudes, so north of us, but also down in the subtropics. There's been tremendous amounts of warmth, hence the heat waves that we've seen. Warmer oceans, atmosphere transition from three year La Nina to El Nino, Hunga Tonga, that's getting thrown in there again. The cause of this blocking, both in the middle latitudes as well as the high latitudes, uh, will this continue as we move into the winter season? Good question. Worth looking back at past spring summers uh, with a firm negative NEO pattern. The standout, perhaps. To 2023 is 2009 and then we're going to start getting into the, the nitty-gritty here remember this isn't a forecast this is just showing you the parameters the drivers that we have in place and where they may go as we move towards the winter season so linkage between the enzo so southern oscillation index the indian ocean dipole and the madden julian oscillation type of el nino Ocean says an east-based El Nino, the atmosphere suggests possibly a more central-based Madoki. While the tropical Pacific has strongly warmed in the east from the beginning of 2023, it's steadily warmed westwards through the spring and summer, so the atmosphere has been slow to catch up, likely due to the triple Nina, and this in turn has led to the continuation of a negative PDO signal in the Pacific. Now you can see here, this is September subsurface temperature for the November, January oceanic index, uh, Nino index here. You can see here that we are below 1982, 2015 and 1997 in terms of the overall uh, El Nino itself here. Uh, the 2023 El Nino as of October 2023, so I've kind of repeated myself, is strong based on sea surface temperatures. However, the atmosphere has been a stop start with not particularly clear walker circulation evident. You can see the article below for a little bit more with regards to the walker circulation. Don't have enough time to look into this too much. Uh, this could be a simple delay with the Nino transition uh, tr traditionally, traditionally peaking in December or could prove significant down the road. So in other words, um, you know, the atmosphere is slow to respond. Is that going to continue or is there a delay? And we will continue to see the upward motion shift more eastwards across the Pacific Ocean. During a developing El Nino, the MJO 
can weaken or become massed as atmosphere begins to feel the change in the sea surface temperature below. Um, so also drives the, uh, on the development process of the MJO remains active within the Pacific. I don't know if that makes uh, an awful lot of sense. I'll have to look back at that. An active MJO, um, Pacific MJO, so that's phases 6, 7, 8, drives westerly wind bursts across the equatorial Pacific Ocean surface and forces subsurface Kelvin waves, that's warm balls of water beneath the equator to push west to east um, and increases the westerly sea. You can see in this diagram the transition. This is a, a cross section of the Pacific Ocean, cold to start with with the El Nino, then a shift to uh, the El Nino. So a cold La Nina signal, sorry, and a shift to an El Nino as we go forward here. But we are seeing some weakening of that very warm waters right up against the South American coast. That could prove important here. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to skip through this here because there's a little bit of kind of science stuff here that I just simply don't have enough time to cover. So there's the La, uh, La Nina conditions with the water circulation, neutral and El Nino conditions here. The key, folks, is where that rising column is over the equatorial region of the planet, both in the Indian Ocean as well as the Pacific. The Walker cell pretty much interlinks all three of the major tropical oscillations, and this is why the tropics really holds the cards when it comes to global weather from the pole. Of course, we need to take into consideration how amplified all these oscillations become, uh, MJO being weak, El Nino becoming stronger, so the El Nino uh, takes center stage, etc., etc. We're seeing um, a, a decrease in temperature. This is interesting. In Nino region 1.2, a decrease in temperature here, holding steady in the central portion of the Pacific. So does that mean that we have more rising there over the central as opposed to the eastern portion of the Pacific? That's going to be the question. How does this El Nino compare to recent times? So it looks as if, based on the 3.4 region, so the central portion of the Pacific, the three-month running mean of July through September 2023 is 1.3 Celsius. And the comparison to this is actually the Super El Nino of 1997. Now, the CANSIPS model and the CFSV2 indicate that the warm waters shift off the South American coast. If they don't do that in the atmosphere, Responds to that east based El Nino, I think we're going to see a warm overall winter. We'll not go through the details too much with regards to the Indian Ocean dipole. I just simply don't have enough time to do that here. Manjulian oscillation, uh, uh, central Pacific based El Nino and positive IOD favors more upward motion in the cold favorable phases for high latitude blocking eight and one. So those are the two phases that you want to see the manjulian in for high latitude block. And, and you can see that here, 7, 8, and 1 promotes a negative NAO and a positive signal here. Interesting times to come, by the way, with regards to the MJO. High latitude block and looks as if it's going to develop as we move towards the second half of October into early November. Watch this space. I'm going to try and have a video come up tomorrow with regards to that. Could be very interesting indeed. This is some past examples of both warm and cool winters based on the Manjulian oscillation. You can look at that in the section below. East QBO firmly entrenched within the stratospheric equatorial um, zonal mean winds. So we are going to see that. The Arctic sea ice was sixth weakest, uh, least on record. The stratospheric polar vortex is strengthening. We do have some warming taking place over Siberia. Nothing really to write home about. And we have got a weak, then strong, then possible weak uh, stratospheric polar vortex as we go forward here. It's the jury still out with regards to this winter here, folks. So, um, yeah, we will have update number three probably early November. So stay tuned for that. And uh, watch this space. There is lots of things to consider when it comes to the winter forecast overall here. So stay tuned. I hope you did enjoy this. I hope it was helpful. And like I say, I will try and be back uh, tomorrow with a video looking at the nearer term. Please like, share and subscribe. And I'll see you again, hopefully tomorrow with more. Bye for now.